Hi everybody, welcome to lecture two of Digital VLSI Design. This lecture is all about the Verilog hardware description language, which is the example of a hardware description language that we'll be using in this course. But most of the concepts are correct for VHDL or for System Verilog or other hardware description languages. So let's start with the important question of what is a hardware description language? And my straightforward answer is that a hardware description language or an HDL is not just any other programming language. In fact, we're usually used to uh, programming languages that are sequential, they're serial. Um, commands come one after the other. In hardware description languages, what we're doing is we're not describing the flow of data that goes through a processor that works in, in, in sequence. Rather, we're um, describing actual hardware constructs that are all scattered around our chip and they are all executing in parallel. That's a very hard concept to overcome and it takes a while to understand it and get used to it, that things actually happen at the same time. It also means that code ordering is flexible. What do I mean by code order being flexible? Well, let's look at the example over here. In this example, we can write A equals 1, B equals 2, and then after it, we'd write C equals A plus B. In a regular, um, in a regular language, we would have A equals 1 happen first, then B equals 2, and of course C means uh, 1 plus 2, and then C equals 3. The same thing happens in Verilog, but the interesting thing is that we can put this C equals A pl plus B first, then write A equals 1, and then write B equals 2, and we'll see exactly how to do that um, in, in the rest of the lecture. But in this case, C also equals 3, because A equals 1 and B equals 2 are happening in parallel to C equals A plus B. We'll try to understand that later on better. Okay, execution of codes is triggered by what we call events. So every time something happens, something changes, an event is, uh, is struck, and then the simulator, which actually goes and tries to show us if our code is behaving like it, uh, we planned for it to, will go and we'll, we'll figure out what happened exactly at that event. There are other types of simulators, but most of them are event-driven uh, simulators and they are, are triggered by events, okay? Um, since an event causes things to happen, it sees what changed and it goes to what we call a sensitivity list, which is a list of signals that affect a certain construct we have there. So the sensitivity list um, uh, the looks and sees if one of the signals that are in the sensitivity list had changed and that's when we know that a certain code section or construct is supposed to be executed. And uh, it's very important to note that some things, because they're happening in parallel, are unclear which happens first and which happens second. This can cause different simulators to actually yield different results. That is not something that is wanted. And um, of course, in hardware, we have to know exactly what happened. So that means, and uh, this is very important, that a coding style is required. And what we're going to learn here is how to write Verilog with a specific coding style that will ensure that what we do will actually work. Verilog has three coding styles or three abstraction levels. The first one in the most basic or most low level one is what we call structural code. Structural code or gate level or a gate level uh, or a net list or GTL um, is just a list of, um, of gates that, and the connectivity between them, what type of nets connect the different ports or pins on these gates and how they're, how they're connected together. Um, it's not re very readable. We just have a, basically a list of uh, gates and, and, con and connections. It doesn't say anything. Uh, we have to go and draw it maybe on a piece of paper and try to understand, but that's really hard to do once we have a lot of gates. The second coding style is what we call RTL or register transfer level. That's how we write what we call synthesizable Verilog. That's what we do use to write Verilog that actually describes hardware that can be uh, turned into gates it can be turned into a gate level netlist, but it's much more readable and uh, a more behavioral level of uh, description. There is a higher abstract level in Verilog, which is pure behavioral, where we can write all kinds of for loops and, and so forth and different things that are, are very um, abstract and, and can cause things to happen just like in other programming languages, but we can't actually produce, or at least not automatically produce hardware from them. Um, we use this for writing test benches. Um, a lot of times nowadays we don't actually use Verilog for writing test benches, but rather other higher level languages such as System Verilog, E, or, or others. But um, the Verilog hardware language, which was actually written 
to write uh, for the purpose of writing simulations um, has this support for higher level constructs or behavioral code that we'll see how to write test benches with it. Inside um, that, I, I basically pointed out this RTL and structural code are used for, uh, for describing what we call the DUT, the device under test. That's the actual hardware we're trying to describe. So, so these things, we can actually go and make gates and transistors and so forth that will implement them. Um, so they have to be written in this RTL or this GTL um, level. On the other hand, the test bench, it represents the system, and then we can write it in a, a purely behavioral code or a mixture between behavioral and uh, RTL and structural, but uh, it's very uh, in a behavioral, and it, often we use other higher level languages such as um, E or uh, System Verilog.